Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows. Today is my weekly review of the new episode of The Mandalorian Season 3. This episode is titled The Foundling, and is directed by Carl Weathers, and written by Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau. This episode starts off with the Mandalorians training on the beach outside their cave. The warriors and foundlings pair off and spar with one another using a variety of weaponry. Unlike the others, Grogu is sitting by himself, playing with some rock crabs. Then, Din comes over and enters him into a duel with another foundling. Bo, the judge, and even the other foundling express doubts about Grogu's ability to fight, but Din brushes their concerns aside and gives the go-ahead. Grogu struggles at first, but with a little pep talk from Din, he wields the force and beats the other foundling in their match. It was a little weird how the judge paused the game after each of the other kids hits, but then let like, Grogu score three points all at once. Like, could the other kid have just shot Grogu three times and called it a day? It doesn't really matter, because a giant pterodactyl looking creature flies in and snatches up the foundling Grogu beat, and Din and Paz Vizsla chase after it using their jetpacks. They run out of fuel, but luckily Bo is smart enough and fast enough to grab her ship and follow after the bird. She returns with the location of the nest and then suggests they form a hunting party. She and Din volunteer, and Rook Cast orders Paz Vizsla to assemble the Shriekhawk team and go with them. They set out, leaving Grogu behind in Cast's care. She takes Grogu into the blacksmithing chamber and gives him a lesson about the forge, one that reminds him of how he escaped Order 66. He remembers the Jedi protecting him, being cut down while they fled, and how Keller and Beck appeared to save him. The dual-wielding Jedi took on the stormtroopers and escaped with Grogu on a speeder bike. They were chased through the Coruscant skies by several attack ships, but Beck managed to lose them by flying through a Skytrain tunnel. The two make it to a platform where a Naboo ship is waiting for them, but the Imperials arrive before they can leave. The Naboo guard makes a noble sacrifice, staying behind to give Beck and Grogu time to escape. As Beck and Grogu jump to hyperspace, Grogu is brought back to the present by the sparks of the forge. Cast offers him an emblem as his next piece of armor. It has Din's house symbol on it, and she pins it to Grogu's chest. Then the story cuts back to Bo's hunting party. They've arrived at the foot of the cliff, and they exit the ship and find a place to settle down for the night. They are each given some rations, and then they split off from each other to eat. Bo is given the spot closest to the fire, as is the right of the leader. She takes her helmet off to eat and looks a little unsettled. The next day, the Mandalorians scale the cliffside using their grappling hooks. When they make it to the top, Din scans the nest and finds a couple of small heat signatures, but no giant pterodactyl. Paz Vizsla reveals that the boy taken was his son, and he rushes out to find him, ruining Bo's plan. The heat signature belonged to the beast's chicks, and they nearly eat Paz Vizsla before the mother shows up and regurgitates the boy. She's about to feed him to her chicks when Vizsla jetpacks up and distracts her. The bird grabs both Vizslas and flies off, leading to a chase between the Mandalorians and the giant pterodactyl. Bo loses an armor piece and Paz Vizsla gets knocked out of the sky, but the group manages to get enough cables around the beast's wings to bring it down and force it to drop the boy. Din grabs the kid and the beast falls into the water where it's eaten by a giant whale monster living in the lake. The episode ends with Bo getting a new pauldron made for her by Cast. Cast asks her what design she wants and she asks for the mythosaur. Cast agrees to do it, and then Bo tries to tell her about seeing the mythosaur. Cast initially doesn't understand, but when Bo insists it was real, she tells Bo that walking the path of the Mandalore will cause her to see many things. It's a little cryptic and vague, but it seems like Rook knows what journey Bo is on, and she seems to think it's to become the leader of the Mandalorian people. I can't say that's what I'm hoping for. Teamed in all the way, baby! But it certainly fits with her character to lead now, after she's finally learned all her lessons and been properly humbled. Okay, now for the review part. The story for this episode was filled with excitement, and it returned to a more adventurous feeling when compared to last week's tonal departure. The story focused on Din and Bo saving Paz Vizsla's son from a giant dino bird, and we get a little flashback about Grogu from the Order 66 time period. It doesn't make much sense why the bird didn't just eat the boy or feed him to her chicks the first time she went back to her nest, but this episode has a few little plot holes like that in it. We get a lot of lore building and mysticism through Rip Cast. She gives off this preacher vibe, and when Bo and Grogu are in her blacksmithing room, it feels like they're in a confessional getting advice from a priest. The flashback is a little bit of a tease, giving us just enough information to make us want more, but not enough to piece anything together. Who is Keller and Beck, and why did the Naboo guard show up to save him? No idea, but it was fun to watch. Those guys totally could have made it onto the ship, though. The storyline with Din and Bo takes a nice little trip through the desert, gives us some more lore about the Mandalorians and their respect for leadership and the code, and we learn that the boy who took the creed at the start of the season was Paz Vizsla's son. It's great lore building, but they didn't spend much time developing any of the characters beyond Grogu, and the characters felt more like passengers in this episode than drivers. It's exciting, but not consistent. The cast does well at their roles, but no one stands out as exceptional this week. There just wasn't anything amazing for anyone to do. 
The Mandalorians are wearing their helmets for the entire episode, with Bo only taking hers off for a moment to eat. Rook Cast gives two small speeches, but neither is enough to qualify as exceptional, and Ahmed Best, who appears as Keller and Beck, spends his entire screen time fighting off stormtroopers, fleeing on a speeder bike, and flying a ship. He gets very little dialogue. He kills the physicality of the role, but he doesn't get to do much else. Visually, the episode looks great during the parts with the Children of the Watch, and the fight between the Jedi and Stormtroopers during Order 66 looks alright, but the CGI soundstage is still flattening the Coruscant skyline. Overall, it's fine, but man is it hard to ignore that Ahmed Best is sitting on a soundstage when he's flying that speeder bike. He just looks like a guy riding one of those kids' rides at the mall. I can just picture him making the engine noises himself as he pretends to be in a chase scene. As usual, the soundtrack is well done, following every part of the story and really fleshing out the scenery. My favorite moments were during the battle and chase between Beck and the troopers, every time someone stepped foot into the blacksmith's temple, and the scene of Bo eating alone by the fire. The action music was great at backing the Jedi's escape and making it feel like a daring and dangerous moment. The other scenes really get at the mystical nature of the Star Wars universe. The music that backs Cast's speech is an intense tribal rhythm that grows with each strike on the plate and Grogu's fears grow with it. His weakness is revealed at the apex. At the fire with Bo, we get a soft, mysterious melody that hints at the sad and lonely nature of the Mandalorian way, and then we get a hopeful, mysterious sound at the end when she's talking with Cast about walking the path of the Mandalore, with just a hint of danger to close it out. It's significant, used sparingly, and it all fits really well with the subject matter. Overall, this episode was pretty exciting. The story wasn't the most consistent or well thought out, and some of the dialogue was a little repetitive and simplistic, but there's so much good action that it's easy to overlook some of the details. Seeing Ahmed best again was a delight, especially given the work he's already done on the franchise. I loved learning about the Mandalorian culture, seeing Grogu interact with other members of the clan, and following along with whatever transformation Bo is currently undergoing. The episode doesn't really try anything new or experimental, doing another scenario of the week with a slightly older trope, but a trope nonetheless. The visuals aren't pushing any boundaries, and the soundtrack is good, but is similar in nature to most other Star Wars tracks. I enjoyed the experience, and I can't wait to see where we're going. Bo looks like she's gearing up to try and be the leader of the Mandalorians again, while Din seems content to continue on as a father to Grogu and a member of the clan. I think the Order 66 tie-in is leading us into another Imperial Remnant arc, given the focus of last week's episode and the destruction of Bo's castle by an Imperial Warlord. Grogu is also finally becoming a character. He's acting on his own, almost talking, and bonding with characters other than Din. I think it's safe to say that he might even get his own helmet this season. To cut a long review somewhat short, my rating for this episode is 7 out of 10. Anyway, those were just my thoughts on the episode. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Peace!